Throughout the US, you can find a huge variety of ecosystems, from forests to mountains to the ocean, an array of different plants and animals are found in each of the different habitats. While I love exploring any natural areas, my absolute favorite place to look for wildlife is in and around creeks. The water here provides a cool, refreshing drink for mammals and birds, a place to live for fishes and amphibians, and a place to hunt for just about any predator. Not only can animals be found here at all times of the year, creeks are very common in most suburban and rural areas. Even in cities, public parks often feature a creek of some kind, and while they may not be pristinely preserved, they will still attract incredible amounts of wildlife. In today's episode, I will be teaching you about the organisms which make up a creek ecosystem, starting at the top of the food chain and working my way down through the different trophic levels. You'll learn about all kinds of amazing animals, and hopefully be able to take that information with you when you go on adventures of your own. Let's get started! While exploring and filming at my favorite creek, I can consistently find small animals such as minnows and insects almost every time I go. Larger animals are a bit more rare, and I wasn't totally sure that I would be able to film an actual top predator for today's episode. However, one lucky day, I discovered just what I was looking for. This is the Great Blue Heron. Easily recognizable by its long legs and slim body, these incredible birds are top predators in many creek ecosystems. They prey on animals including frogs, fish, and even snakes or small mammals on occasion. Wading slowly and deliberately through the water with their spindly but strong legs, they will freeze as soon as they spot prey with their impeccable eyes. Standing motionless, the heron will wait for the prey item of choice to wander towards it, when it will suddenly lunge its dagger-like beak forward and skewer the meal. Their neck vertebrae are actually specially shaped for this behavior, attached to one another with muscles to ensure that the bird does not hurt itself while snapping at food. There you go. <laughs> Whoa, he stabbed it. That was awesome. I'm going to be honest with you guys. When that heron lunged at the fish, I swore he was about to stab me with that beak. That was one crazy creature encounter. While an adult great blue heron can easily stand between 3 and 5 feet tall, they only weigh about 5 or 6 pounds. Like other birds, their bones are actually hollow in the inside, which is a huge help in weight reduction. You can find these animals at water sources across most of the US, especially in places with abundant trees and other cover to hide in. They are usually spotted during the day, but have been seen hunting at night in the past. The best way to get up close to one is by being very slow and quiet, as their excellent eyes and ears will alert them to your presence with one misstep. Alright, now that we've seen one animal at the top of the food chain, let's look at another contender for Alpha Predator. This reptile isn't found in every creek system, but when it is present, everything on its menu definitely knows that a snapping turtle is hunting. These are the largest turtles in most places where they dwell, and everyone has heard about, and is afraid of, their bite. I won't spend very long talking about this animal right now, since I've already made two videos about them, but they are still part of some creeks and definitely worthy of recognition. Common snapping turtles are usually thought of as dwelling in larger aquatic habitats such as ponds or lakes, and they are found there quite often, but many times you can find one in a creek. When they live in such small amounts of water, they will usually burrow down into the mud for most of the day, and wait for any fish, frogs, mice, or even young snakes to swim by. Then, they will snap their jaws shut, and the razor-sharp beak quickly dispatches most prey. I have found a snapper in a creek only once in my life, and it was long before I started making videos, but I know for certain that these dinosaur-like reptiles can and will make such an ecosystem their home. However, it should be noted that some turtles may simply be using a creek as a rest stop during a journey to a larger water source or during the breeding season, so if you wind up finding one once, it doesn't always mean that it will be there again. If you want to find one of these mud dragons, it will probably take a lot of work. Not only is their camouflage impeccable, they rarely ever move, so spotting one will take a lot of luck and time in the water. 
I would not recommend feeling around in the mud where you think a turtle might be, because if a finger ends up near their head, they will not hesitate to take a chop. And I speak from experience. To learn more, check out the snapping turtle videos on my channel. Well everyone, that is all for this part of my creek ecosystem overview, where I covered animals that can be found at the top of the food chain. Make sure to stay tuned in the coming weeks for part 2 of this mini documentary, in which you can learn about the middle and bottom levels of the creek food chain. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to comment and tell me, and if not, let me know what I can improve on. Thank you all very much for your support, and have a wild day. This is Ben Zeno of The Wall Report, signing out.